It is celiac awareness week this week and while gluten or rather gluten free has become maybe a bit of a fad around 65,000 people actually suffer from the disease in New Zealand. Healthy Food Guide nutritionist Claire Turnbull here with some of the facts. Uh, first of all, just explain to us exactly what celiac disease is. So it's an autoimmune um, disorder where basically you, when you have gluten, it damages the, in, the, the lining of your bowel. So normally what happens is your bowel is like a tube with lots of little fingers in it that increase its surface area. When someone with celiac disease has gluten, those little fingers go flat, meaning basically food goes straight through and you aren't able to absorb things properly and there's all sorts of complications that come with that. So it really is quite serious. Oh, it's very, very serious. And there's, you know, people can, are more likely to be infertile if they've got undiagnosed celiac disease. You've got all the um, iron deficiency. You're not going to grow properly because if you're not able to absorb the nutrients from your food, you know, that is incredibly serious. So if you do have it, are you likely to know there's something seriously going on, mm. just not sure what? Yeah, well, some people get really, really, really intense symptoms and some people don't. So there is um, change in bowel habits. Some people struggle to lose weight. Extreme tiredness, because obviously if you're going to be struggling um, to absorb iron, you're going to be very, very tired. Infertility, again, is, is um, one of the things to look out for. Quite easy to diagnose though? Um, quite easy to diagnose if you're having enough gluten in your diet. You need to have a blood test and then from the blood test you actually have what's called a biopsy. So they take a little sample of the, the, um, the bowel, look at it and see are these villi, are these fingers healthy or not. It amazes me. We said the number in the intro, 65,000 Kiwis, uh, yet 80% of those apparently don't know. That's more than 50,000 people mm. in this country ha don't know that, that they've, they've got, it. got it. So is this quite a new thing or is it just something which people have probably sort of laboured along with, survived with uh, over for generations? Yeah, so it is becoming an increasing problem. There's a genetic link there. So um, there are certain countries who have much higher rates than in other places. One of the issues is, is that people are going gluten-free for a variety of different reasons without getting the tests done first. And if you don't have enough gluten in your diet when you get the test, you'll get um, what's called a false negative. So you, it may look like you oh no you don't have celiac disease but you've got to be eating gluten in the first place so if you are have some weight loss you're really really tired you've got bloating change in bowel habits or whatever the most important thing is to go to the doctor get the test done to see if you have got celiac disease mm. um, and then, and then you know try and you're deal playing with, it. with really. because uh, you say it's an autoimmune system uh, mm. uh, disease that's what it affects as a disease and I, I note that it's, it's incredibly easy to be in contact with gluten even when you know about it yes. and you take me take measures to avoid it, it's mm. still really hard to avoid. Yeah, and that's one of the biggest problems is because um, with the increased interest in gluten-free in our cafes and restaurants, there's a lot of, they're saying, oh, this is a gluten-free cake or it's a gluten-free, um, you know, food, whatever it is. Unless that has been made on a separate chopping board in a separate toaster with separate tongs and a completely, it is not gluten-free. So a lot of cafes and restaurants, without realising, are making false claims about their wow. food. And it's a big problem for people with celiac disease. So even the tiniest, tiniest amount Yep. could affect someone with celiac. Yeah, so it has to be no detectable gluten. And this is what the Celiac Society are doing something fantastic where they're putting an accreditation process together called the Dining Out Project, where they're actually... Um, dining out program, sorry, where they're actually trying to help restaurants and cafes to upskill staff so that they know, because a lot of people don't realise that actually for someone with celiac disease, they need separate toaster, separate knife, separate, separate butter. Separate toaster. Separate everything. So it's about as careful as you'd have to be about saying there are no nuts in like this. Eggs obviously. Yeah. yeah. Because any, any gluten at all can damage the bowel and if any damaging of the bowel can cause all these other long-term health issues for people with celiac disease. So it is, there is a very big difference between someone who is eliminating gluten for you know various other choice reasons and someone with celiac disease who literally has to have no detectable gluten to be healthy. I want to quickly talk about those who have chosen to eliminate gluten who aren't celiac but, mm. but they see a health benefit to it. Um, uh, you mentioned it as maybe being a fad but is there, is there a genuine advantage for some people? And all, but on the flip side, is there a disadvantage to avoiding gluten? Yeah, so th there is um, non-celiac gluten sensitivity. So you can actually have, um, you know, people do feel better or some people yeah. do feel better on a gluten-free diet. And provided that they are replacing um, the, and getting nutrients from other places, then it, then it can be OK. The problem is that for some people, they are going on relatively extreme diets and not getting good nutrients from other places. So it is just kind of finding out what works for you but overall looking at the quality of your diet.
so much to learn. Mm. <laughs> there is so much to learn. I am just mm. blown away by how sensitive people can be. Um, someone in the studio earlier was just saying, if you've, ha you're at a dinner party and there's two bowls of chips, one's gluten-free, one's not, yep. if you put your hand from one bowl of chips to the other, then you've cross-contaminated and yep. the celiac cannot eat from that bowl. Yeah, and that's the thing, that because the, the gluten-free um, has kind of increased so much uh, and for not people with celiac disease, they're not aware of the need, mm. um, you know, that... The that some people with celiac disease, that's two toasters in a house, two breadboards, mm. two different pots of jam, because you can't be having the crumbs. It's not about just taking the croutons off a salad. They cannot be anywhere near it because any Amazing. trace of gluten damages the bowel. And I guess the other problem with that is that you don't see this initial fast and, um, and extreme impact as you might do if somebody's just been exposed to egg or nut when they're, when they're allergic. So, it, yeah. so it's hard to, to know at what stage there has been contamination. Um, Claire, thank you very much. Really interesting. Thank uh, you. Who'd know that there was, so it's, it's Celiac Awareness Week? Hmm. There you go. Mm. Thank you.